Good morning, everyone. Mokhel t o l I am Sangun An. Uh, this morning, I'm going to share with you about God's judgment. God will bring His enemy nations to the valley of Jehoshaphat. This morning, we are going to learn about the meaning of Jehoshaphat. Okay, uh, you see the picture. Two mountain tops. Two mountain top is a sim has the symbol meaning of witness. Number two in the Bible is the number of witness. Two mountain tops are two witnesses of God, according to Joel 3, 1 to 16. Okay, uh, there are many twin mountain tops, mostly the mountains. That has two mountain tops regarded as a holy place. Two mountain tops in the Bible. Number one, Zion, the Jerusalem, situated in between two mountain tops. The Hebron also, two mountain tops. Ebal and Grizim, and then Joshua also made a covenant with his people between two mountain tops. How about mountain Ararat? Is a holy mountain. Among Armenian church members, because Mount Ararat is the where the Ark of Noah landed. Then first uh, population increased there, so they began to worship there. That's the holy place. Okay, in the book of Zechariah 6:1, then the prophets saw the two bronze mountain tops. That's the mountain of God. Okay, between Jerusalem and the mountain Olive, right side of photo is eastern wall of Jerusalem. Okay, second photo, you see the wall, that's the eastern wall of uh, Jerusalem. And then let's slow down, and then there is a valley of Jehoshaphat. And the left side, the mountain Olive is uh, uh, ascending again. To defend the cause of the fatherless and the widow is one of the main duties of the rulers. Isaiah 1, 23. Okay, one more time. To defend the cause of the fatherless and widows is one of the main duties of the rulers and the judges. Lamenting over Jerusalem injustice, poor widow's case does not come before the rulers and judges. There is a sharp comparison between human judge and Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat means Jehovah plus judged. The God judges. Jehovah is the judge. That's the meaning of Jehoshaphat in the book of prophets. Okay, uh, ancient Hebrew of the Jehoshaphat shows us the. Concrete meaning or the deeper meaning of the Shaphat. Shaphat, okay, he judged Shaphat, uh, can be explained as follows according to ancient Hebrew. Okay, first picture this is the Shin, picture letter Shin. This is the description of woman's breast or mother's breast. We can interpret woman. Or mother, or according to context, poor widow here. Okay, second, mouth, shape of mouth, pair. Okay, meaning is mouth, if it is the verb, to eat or to kiss. Okay, third letter, tet. Tet is the, the round. Circle inside the circle. There's an X. Uh, X means very precious thing, and then in the circle, uh, this is the uh, description of food container or basket in ancient time with a cover. Okay, so this is the attempt, uh, the meaning, attempt the interpretation of the meaning. Number one, the concept. Of judge, what could be the concept of fair judge? 
judge any judge any act of judge must be righteous and must be fair so the uh, this picture that the describes the, the essence the concept of judge okay the shapat it could be interpreted in this way to make a poor woman shin okay shin poor woman and then to eat mouth i translate it into eating so shin woman poor woman eats the food by fair judgment by the result of righteous judgment that's the concept of this picture so, second interpretation what is the righteous judgment fair judgment okay speak uh, this is the uh, verb i translate into speak speak this is the speak of judges speak uh, in the plus for taking care of poor widow speaking for woman poor woman poor widow shin okay uh, is it understandable to, for taking care of poor widow woman it is shin and then plus so that she may eat the food you know the problem of the poor one and the poor widow uh, they are always suffering lacking food okay this is the unfair unrighteous the practice uh, among the judges in this world even today no money you become guilty whenever you go to the law court if you do not use any amount of money you become guilty if you use much money much money makes you innocent and this is very a very funny talk so we are indignant are you indignant because of many injustice of someone are you indignant and getting angry because of many injustice of someone okay therefore we are waiting for God's fair judgment Jehoshaphat okay we must believe in we believe in God rules the whole world God is watching over us therefore we are waiting for God's fair judgment by faith and through prayer okay in the book of the Luke gospel of Luke 8 chapter 18 verse 1 to 3 the parable of persistent widow Jesus said in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought and there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea grant me justice against my adversary grant me justice against my enemy okay and the exodus 22 22 do not take advantage of the widow or the fatherless okay the wicked judge are doing this Deuteronomy 24 when you are harvesting leave of leave forgotten sheaf of grain and olives for the foreigner the widow so that the Lord your God may bless you okay Proverbs 31 9 speak up and judge fairly defend the rights of the poor and the needy there are many uh, the lessons many words of encouragement so that the judges may behave righteously may judge fairly but uh, in most cases fair judgment are ignored that's why God intervene human affair frequently okay do you see another twin mountain time this is a Hebron mountain Hebron uh, was a holy place 
Okay, view of Jehoshaphat Valley from the top of Olive Mountain. Okay, there's the lower. I I want to see the lower part of the picture. Lower part of the picture. You see Golden Dome. Is the Muslim temple standing on the so Solomon Temple site? Okay, there the place where Golden Dome standing. That's the where Solomonic Temple was standing, but it was destroyed. In, there is no Jewish temple today. Jewish people is still in national humiliation. Okay, around Jerusalem city, there are many Christian uh, cathedral, Christian memorial church buildings. Okay, you see the mountain, Hebron mountain also is a holy mountain, mountain of God's justice. Two tops, whatever we are doing, two mountain tops are watching over. Okay, whenever we are praying, two mountain tops are witnesses of I'm praying. Okay, this is the spiritual meaning. Okay, so uh, in the picture, in the front part, there are many, this is a uh, tombs, many graves. They are waiting for the day of resurrection. The, when Jesus comes again, all dead in faith will be resurrected. And they are waiting for God's judgment, okay? God's fair judgment. And then it is slanting, going down, descending, and then going up. So two mountain tops are standing in Mount Zion. Okay, let us read the Bible text, Joel 3.2. I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance, my people Israel, because they scattered my people among the nations and dividing up my land. Verse 16, The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. Verse 17, then you will know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion, my holy hill. Jerusalem will be holy. Verse 19, but Egypt will be desolate, Edom a desert waste, because of violence done to the people of Judah in whose land they shed innocent blood. Okay, God remembers every wicked behaviors of human being. So on this day, whenever God intervenes in human affair, God give his judgment, the righteous judgment between good and evil. Okay, so uh, a man of faith, we Christians must not be discouraged, must not be frustrated whenever we face uh, injustice, wicked things in the world. Okay, now I want to look at the photo, the upper part. There, there is a, do you see two mountain tops? This is the mountain Ararat. Okay, the meaning is God's witnesses. Whenever you are humiliated, remember the the Aesop's fable, the wind and the sun. Okay, this is the the summary of this story. Uh, who is stronger? Their main concern is who is stronger. Wind and the sun are competing. Now, who is stronger? Rich man or poor man? Okay. The while they were disputing, they saw a traveler coming down the road, and the sun said, I see a way to decide our dispute. The one who can cause the traveler to take off his cloak, put off his cloak, 
shall be regarded as the stronger you begin. So the wind began to blow as hard as it could upon the traveler. But the harder he blew, the more closely did the traveler wrap his cloak round him. At last, the wind had to give in despair. Then the sun came out and shone in all its glory, smiling upon the traveler. The traveler soon found it too hard to walk with his cloak on, so he took up out of his own hand. So, lesson is this, kindness affects more than severity. Once again, kindness affects more than severity. Endure until the Lord, the Son of Righteousness, appeared to you. Malachi 4.2 written, but for you who are waiting for God, but for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with the healing in his race, and you will go out and the frolic like a well-fed covers. Okay, uh, whenever you are humiliated, remember God is watching over you like a twin mountains. So, Mountain Ararat is twin mountains, okay? Uh, when the great flood subsided, and as the Noah and his family start new life, new human history, the two mountains that was, uh, was watching over as a witness. So, whenever they prayed to God, they were witnesses of their prayer. And then they watch um, the fulfillment, the getting answer of their prayer. This is the foundation of Christian faith. Okay, many of us are angry because of wicked things are happening. Okay, let us read together. As you are humiliated by someone, remember this. The humiliation of having to crawl between the legs of one's adversary. And this is a Chinese history. There's a, a Hanshin. He was a king. He became a king at last. Hanshin, but when he was a nobody, while he was young, he did endure rather than engage in sword fight when he was nobody. Later, he became commander and a king. In the situation of utter humiliation, endure until the Lord rises you up. When you are indignant against someone, endure it. And remember the valley of Jehoshaphat. The Lord will judge for what they did wickedly. Joel 3.2 Okay, this is the Christian eschatology. Uh, okay, the pictures are the photo of the Megiddo, the plain of the Armageddon. It was a famous, the, in ancient time, famous battlefield. Even Napoleon fight wage war here. Early, early Egyptian kings they wage war here. And then great Alexander also waged war here. It's a historical famous battlefield because uh, it's geographically it's very vast. And at the end of the horizon, there is a mountain. Uh, it, it, the mountain top was used as a headquarter. And then this part, there's a, a hard mountain. A little, little hill, it was functioning as a headquarter. And then in between two small mountain tops, and there's a vast field of a waging war. Okay, uh, let us read the slide. Christian eschatology. Eschatology means the end time. What's going on? What's going to happen in the time of the end? Christian eschatology. The plain of Megiddo. Remember, plain of Megiddo and is prophetic beliefs. Okay. Re Revelation 16, 16. 
the enemies of God gathered the kings together to Armageddon. Armageddon means Har Megiddo, Mountain Megiddo. The purpose of this gathering is for waging war against the Almighty God. Megiddo Plain is equivalent to Jehoshaphat Valley in Jerusalem. Armageddon, Armageddon or Megiddo Plain is the symbolic name regarding divine punishment of God's enemies. The war during Deborah's time. In the book of Judges 4 and 5, the, by the intervention of God, the Israelites won the great victory under the Deborah's the command. Where God miraculously destroyed the enemy who gathered against Israel at Megiddo Plain. More than 300,000 enemies gathered there against only, only 20,000 Israel soldiers. So Armageddon is the symbol of every battle in which the Lord suddenly revealed His power for His distressed people and defeat the enemy against the church for the final battle. God rules the world. Amen. God rules the world. God rules over me. Okay. Any moment we are struggling, any moment we are humiliated, any moment uh, we become hopeless, any moment I am surrounded by so many enemies, just endure it, have a faith in God, and then offer your plea to God in your prayer. Then God will intervene. God rules over you. Okay, now you are going to experience the judgment of God. That is Jehoshaphat. Okay. God is so near to you. Have faith in God. Be strong in the Lord. God bless you. And heavenly peace be upon you.